Uh, you published uh, on the 22nd of September the first results of the uh, stress test related to climate change. Uh, uh, interesting results. Uh, of course, uh, you, uh, the, the stress, test point, uh, stress test pointed that the companies, uh, businesses and banks will be confronted to uh, increasing climate risks. Uh, and you even pointed to po that in the worst case scenario, uh, Europe GDP could be knocked off by 10% and that um, uh, corporate default could rise by 30% in case we are in the worst case scenario and the, and the transition is done too slowly. Uh, but um, if we compare that with the decisions taken uh, uh, during the monetary policy review, we don't see that, sen that sense of urgency in the proposals you made, in the sense that of course, there are actions there and we acknowledge that. But we, as, we don't st still don't have a clear policy when it comes to climate change related to the collateral policy, to the corporate bond purchase program. Um, so I would like uh, to ask you, um, uh, for how long will the ECB continue buying a highly polluted corporate bonds? Uh, uh, when are we going to depart uh, from this uh, market neutrality principle that you yourself have uh, criticized many times here in, in this committee? Um, I know that there are proposals, you have proposed to work on alternative benchmarks uh, for 2022. I don't know if you could tell us more about this, but uh, we see that uh, in the review there is a lack of sense of urgency and we would like to know also the next steps when it comes to, the, uh, to adapting monetary policy to climate change. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for your question, because you give me a chance to, uh, to really clarify and re-insist again on uh, what I regard as an imperative. Um, first of all, you're right, we published uh, last week the results of this top, what I call the top-down stress test, which will be complemented next year in 22 by the bottom-up stress test, which will focus on a bank-by-bank -bank basis and uh, will uh, actually include all the systemically important institutions. But this top-down exercise uh, was, was a monumental task of actually uh, mapping various databases uh, on uh, taking into account the later, sorry, the pre-latest scenario of the NGFS. So it, is, it, is, it can be challenged, and I know that some people argue that it is not exactly accurate because the scenarios that we've used are not the latest NGFS scenario. But that aside, uh, the mapping of all the database has actually helped us put together four million firms worldwide, which are the counterparties to the banks, and 1,600 euro area banks. So by mapping those databases together, it helped us identify exactly what the risks were, particularly the physical risks, even more so than the transition risks, where they were located, how concentrated they were, they were, and what the consequences would be. So, as you mentioned, it has a serious impact on, on, on GDP, and it would uh, clearly have a much heavier, um, it, it would be much more costly in terms of, of outcome if those risks were not taken into account uh, now, essentially. So that brings me to your sense of urgency. First of all, two years ago, if you remember, um, I did appear before you and I did answer all your questions, particularly concerning monetary policy, particularly concerning the European Central Bank traditional acceptance of its uh, mandate and its role and the scope uh, that it considered. And I indulge you into accepting the fact that I would continue talking about two aspects climate change and the role of women in the economy. And on climate change, it wasn't a given two years ago that it would actually feature, as it does in the strategy review conclusions of the Euro system, and that it be regarded as uh, strongly by all governing council members as they did. Now, I'm not taking uh, the credit or claiming anything in that regard, but I just want to remind you that quite a journey has already been traveled, and it's not the end of it. So rather than advocating the urgency of the matter, rather than giving uh, you know, critically important speeches on how urgent and critical it is, what we decided to do was to actually lay out the steps the sequence of events, the responsibilities, the jobs, bit by bit, piece by piece, over the next two years. And 
work is underway. I can assure you that steps have already started. We are on schedule and we will deliver on the calendar that we have laid out. 22 and 23 will be critical years, not just for us at the ECB, but for the Commission and for you, the Parliament, in order to help support uh, those commitments that we have in relation particularly to information and disclosure, which will in turn help us understand what kind of risk we are carrying on our balance sheets and how we can eventually uh, um, alleviate those risks. And that will have to do with collaterals, that will have to do with purchases, that will have to do with the terms under which we purchase. And that will come, of course, on the top of how we factor in climate change matters and the fight against climate change and the protection of the environment in our monetary policy in general. And that will touch on everything ranging from uh, statistics, models, and uh, the actual definition of price stability going forward. Now, I've only talked about what we do in terms of central banking here, um, when it comes to monetary policy in particular. There's a whole segment of work that is underway and will continue to be delivered on the supervision side of the European Central Bank. But you will be seeing uh, Mr. Andre, uh, Andrea Enria soon, and he will be uh, in a position to explain to you in great details what they're doing. But if you look back, uh, publication of the guidelines, uh, initial assessment conducted at the request of the SSM by the banks themselves to conclude that not enough has been done and they are at risk. And, and you carry on, you know, next year, uh, the bottom-up stress test exercise, publication of the results, and we will be at it, trust me.